and I pray you continue to bless the city staff. And I pray you bless Tammy as she drives home tonight. Father, please be with us tonight as we make decisions and the tough decisions that need to be made and as we consider the things that are going to be best for our city now and in the future. Thank you, Lord, for your son. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. Item agenda number four consideration and action on consent agenda. Commissioners, you want to pull anything out? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Justin? Yes. 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 Agenda number six. Public appearances, petitions, communications, and personal appearances. Under Oklahoma law, the city commission members are prohibited from discussing or taking any action on items that are not on today's agenda. Anything? Pass. Number seven. Consideration and discussion concerning a special announcement from the Iowa Tribe regarding American Rescue Act Plan ARP funds and a joint water and waste uh, a joint water tower and wastewater project. Anyone here from the tribe tonight? or table that? I we just take no action. No we action. Put it back on the agenda. Okay. Um, need to. I do know they just got out of a very long meeting. Someone from D.C. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just skip it. Let's just skip it then in case they show up. Okay. All right. Yes, if they if they do, then we'll just can we can go back around to okay. Sounds good. Uh, item agenda number eight: public hearing, ordinance four nine one amending city Perkins <coughs> amending Perkins city code title ten, planning and zoning, chapter twelve land subdivision, section ten dash twelve dash fourteen, sidewalks, and section ten dash twelve dash eleven surety bond, staff. Sure. We we've dealt with this I think before. Um, you may you know the planning commission has discussed it as well. But you should have a red line version of this showing the proposed changes, and you'll see that it's basically um, the big part is that we're changing a shall to a may. Um, in other words, uh, the section 10-12-14 regarding sidewalks says that a side a subdivider. Um, this is part of our zoning code. A subdivider can request a waiver of uh, requirement that they put in the sidewalks at the time they subdivide. Um, the reason that they may want to do that is because they will often plat the land. If you guys approve the plat, that's about the time they typically often sell the land to the builder or builders. And then the builder would like to build the house before they put in the sidewalk because the builder may destroy the sidewalk as they're building the houses. So especially in residential areas, um, this can be a requirement. The problem that comes up, and I think we've discussed this, is that if we just weigh, if you waive the requirement that they put in sidewalks altogether, then um, in the end, if there's some lots that don't sell and no house gets built, there may be places where the sidewalk is and places where the sidewalk is not. And then in lots of situations, cities end up going back in and are going in and paying to put a continuous, contiguous sidewalk. And so the way that we have uh, uh, dealt with this in the past is to say <coughs> that you have to do it unless you get a waiver. 
And what we've done here is to say that, <clears throat> you, yes, you, you can get the waiver, but you have to post the bond or some type of financial guarantee. And, the finance, and we've added a section that says, here's the different ways that you can provide it. A, um, what we're going to be calling in our code of performance guarantee, that's 10-12-11. You can um, put up cash for it, you can put up a performance bond, which is typical, uh, get a letter of credit, or some other guarantee. Currently, our ordinance is not that broad, um, and so it doesn't give um, really the city and the developers a lot of flexibility in how, what's really the best type of, of uh, performance guarantee. So this is just kind of granting yourselves and, and your planning department, which is Bob, um, the ability to have a little more space there. Does this go from here going forward? It would be from today going forward. Yes, it would apply to existing um, plat. In, let me think about that. When would it start applying? No, I didn't. I, I should have asked earlier. So. No, no, that's a well, good question. Well, that might be a different agenda item. No, no, I'm just saying. Hold on a second. Yes, right now, we, 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 still, we, we currently require some type of performance guarantee. It's mm -hmm. just not as broad. It's broad. So it, it would apply any time you grant a waiver, which would be an application that would be made in the future. Sure. I had to think about that. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Ernst, anything to add? No, I would recommend approval. It also adjusts the width of sidewalks. Oh, well, I like that too. From minimum four width. To minimum width from mm -hmm. four to five feet, mm -hmm. and then five to six feet respectively if they're placed directly behind the curb. And this helps us with uh, the American Disabilities Act and things like that. We can, we well, either can way, sure. I think either way we're in compliance, okay. but it makes it a little more user friendly. Okay. I happen to pay attention to that act. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right there with you next month. <clears throat> we can race if you want. Commissioners, any questions? or? And this also gives the commission, sorry to interrupt, no, you're fine. latitude in how the commission wants to deal with the performance guarantee. So it, it gives some latitude that's not there right well, now. It looks like it gives a lot everyone some latitude yeah. and some ability to discern what's needed or yes. from at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? I like the wider sidewalks. <laughs> I think it's a good thing. Do what? I didn't do my usual. She's always on it. Eyeball, you, she, on she's on it. We, I make a motion that we approve uh, the public hearing for ordinance 491 amending Perkins City Code Title 10, planning zoning chapter okay, hold on. 12. Oh. Hold on just a minute. What's the okay. public? We need to move on. Open and close the public hearing. She knew, yeah, I forgot to, to talk with you about the public. Okay. It's, it's because the, the item, actually, agenda item is public hearing. Okay. And then the next item is to consider the ordinance, okay. which means that you need to open the public hearing and ask if anyone wants to be heard in the public to speak about this. And so you close the public hearing and move on to the next agenda item. I apologize, I meant to. Do I need to make a motion to open that public hearing or just say we're going to open a public hearing? Just say it. Okay, so item agenda number eight, we're going to open a public hearing. We've already kind of had a little discussion. Is there anyone that would like to say anything? <clears throat> I suggest we close the public hearing. Now do we move to item agenda nine? All right. Item agenda number nine, consideration, discussion, and possible action to approve Ordinance 491, an ordinance amending Perkins City Code Title 10, Planning and Zoning Chapter 12, Land Subdivision, Section 10-12-14, Sidewalks, <clears throat> and Section 10-12-11, Surety Bond, and 
and declaring an emergency. I need to repeat all that to make a motion. Is there any? Uh, I make a motion that we approve ordinance 491 amending the Perkins City Code Title 10 and Chapter 12 with Section 10-14 and Section 10-12-11 as well as the surety bond and declaring an emergency. So you'll, declare, you'll deal with declaring the emergency next. Okay. I well, second. Thank you, dear. Mayor? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Justin? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Number 10. Consideration, discussion, and possible action on declaring an emergency on ordinance number 491. There's no other conversation. No. Nope. I will make a motion to declare ordinance 491 an emergency. No second. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Sarah? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Justin? Yes. 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 <clears throat> All right, opening item agenda number 11, uh, opening public hearing to consider uh, ordinance number uh, 492, amending Perkins City Code Title 10, planning and zoning chapter 1, definitions and general provisions. Section 10-1-4, Definitions in Title 10, Planning and Zoning. Chapter 7, Establishment of Districts, Article C, Commercial District, Section 10-7C-3, Uses by Review to Include Provisions Regarding Small Box Discount Stores. Commissioners? No, public. Oh, public first? Okay. Anyone from the public like to speak? I do. Tell us, we know who you are. Okay. Tell us your name and address yeah. for well, Harlan okay. Wells, uh, 604 East Highway 33. And uh, <clears throat> you know, in the legislature every year, there may be a thousand or two thousand bills submitted, and they don't pass very many. And this may have been a good idea for somebody, but when you what I've outlined here on the sheet I gave you is kind of how Ben Trump studied things. He wrote down the reasons for and against whatever he was trying to make a decision on. And <clears throat> this voting uh, not to pass this clearly is in the best interest of the citizens of Perkins, the businesses, and future businesses. And um, so I would urge you to, uh, you can read the items that I've put there. And <clears throat> the empty building would then be used for something. And there are several possibilities. Uh, and they'd move into a building that's 50% larger. So they'll have more selection, wider aisles, and um, we can keep tax dollars here in Perkins rather than send them up to Walmart. So I would urge you to vote no. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if somebody has some. I appreciate you coming and speaking. Well, thank you. Anyone else from the public like to speak? <clears throat> Close this public hearing and move on to item number 12. Consideration, discussion, and possible action to approve ordinance 492, an ordinance amending Perkins City Code Title 10, Planning and Zoning, Chapter 1, Definitions and General Provisions, Section 10 1 4, Definitions and Title 10, Planning and Zoning, Chapter 7, Establishment of Districts. Article C, Commercial District, Section 10-7C-3, Uses by Review and Declaring an Emergency. Commissioners or staff? Well, let me just 
just walk through the changes again, the red light version. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you know, we have a use by review requirement before a list of different types of businesses can come in. Um, or not just businesses, but uh, on the list are um, car washes, ceramic shops, mortuaries, uh, certain parking lots, drive-in restaurants, service stations, um, certain types of uses that may limit the, the use of the property in the future. If you put in a car wash, that may limit what the property can be used for in the future. Certain types that, that may require certain environmental concerns. Um, it's just, there's just concerns about these types of businesses that you would like to have a review of before you allow the use. So we call it a review, a use by review. Um, and, the, and you have the opportunity to say, no, that's just not the use that we would uh, want to have made of this particular property that, as being proposed by this developer or owner. This ordinance would add to that list um, uh, of developments that require a use by review permit, a small box discount store. Um, and because we're adding it to the list, we need to define it. And so the first thing that, um, or if you add it to the list, you'd, you'd need to have it defined. The first thing that the ordinance does is define a that define a small box discount store, and it defines what it is not. It has some things specifically what it's not. The definition is pretty gen is pretty um, general. It's, it's pretty short. It's a store of 15,000 square feet or less, which sells a sells at retail an assortment of physical goods, um, products, or merchandise directly to the consumer, including food or beverages for off premises consumption, household products, personal grooming. And health products and other consumers. Um, it does not include um, discount stores or retail, or it does not include retail stores that have at least 15% of shelf space, even a 15,000 square foot or less store that has 15, at least 15,000, 15% 15 of shelf space to fresh, uh, available to fresh or frozen, fresh frozen food. Fresh frozen food is defined as well. If you're interested in the definition of that term, the second thing that, that is not included um, in this definition is a store that dedicates less than two percent of shelf space to food of any kind. So if there's no food in the store, it's not going to be considered a small small box discount store. It does not include a prescription pharmacy or a, a store that offers gasoline or diesel fuel. There is a definition of what fresh or frozen, <coughs> frozen food means. That's the definition section that we that is added at 10-1-4 of the code. I also did a couple of just, while I was at it, cleanups to this ordinance. You'll see some red lines that are just me going, I don't like that way that was worded. Um, that is what in paragraph B of the use by review section 10-7-10-7C-3 is it was goofy wording and I just changed the wording on um, when a use by review can be granted. The main thing that um, and you'll see that subsection B says a use by review may be granted only upon a finding that and lists the three things that you would find before you uh, grant any use any use by review. Permit. Um, for some silly reason, we had that in our code twice. So if you'll if you see on the next page where I deleted E, it's just because we had it in the code twice. Uh, I know that's a little bit confusing, but it just I just didn't see that we needed it twice, so I deleted E. Um, we, uh, so you have to the use for a new section issue, but you want to have that, and then there's, there's an added provision, the new D, the new D. Um, <clears throat> it says small, bo small box discount stores are permitted use by review, subject to a separation requirement. 
No small box discount store can be located within one mile of any other small box discount store or within 200 feet of any property used primarily for a single family residence, uh, residential essentially. Um, the one mile is the, the amount that we came up with and proposed. It was discussed by the Planning Commission and it was explained to the Planning Commission they got, to, they got to think about it. They got to propose to you any, this, this or a different ordinance. Okay. What you're seeing now is what the Planning Commission is proposed, has recommended to you. So they, they decided to settle on the one mile. So that doesn't mean you have to do it. You guys can put any distance, you know, pick the distance that you think is, is appropriate. You can choose not to have a distance. Um, a separation distance or a separation requirement at all. You can choose not to pass this ordinance at all. It's still very fungible and subject to your changes. Um, <clears throat> the only other thing is uh, we don't have people make applications to our building inspector. We do have one now. It's not Bob anymore, so I changed that to say the application was made to city manager. That's what the redline version of this ordinance is. May I speak to a couple of issues? No. I can't speak anymore. Not right now. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all I have. Um, I'll answer any questions you may have. I know Bob has the staff. has the opportunity to speak as staff as well. So this, our planning commission has toiled over this and gone through it, and uh, I know that it, that has been discussed for months now. Is that correct? Yes. And it's not something that they have taken lightly, and I do understand that there's been a lot of research on it. Um, I've actually printed it twice. Um, are there any commissioners have any comments or? Statements that they would like to make in favor or against? Commissioner Cox? I think we're, I think we're growing. I think everyone knows that. I think, uh, I think the Planning Commission has put forth a very good prop proposition here. Uh, that will help us grow in the right way. I, for one, want to shop for fresh food in my city. I want to shop for healthy, fresh food in my city. Was there any particular reason why they chose a mile? Sort of an arbitrary I just was wondering. There were circles drawn on maps, and it would allow, I don't remember the circle exactly. But it was in the research sort of right that they did the have something to do with that. I'm sorry, I did not mean to interrupt That's you. Okay. I Go just ahead. was trying to listen. Something... Well, from, from like the current location of the Dollar General and Family Dollar, one mile, if you can picture, here they are, and here's North and South, the one mile kind of went over close to Twin Lakes, and um, Rusty's place, Perkins Tire and Auto, it covered that. So that was kind of, that's where that cut mile kind of went. That's helpful. I just was curious mm -hmm. why that particular measurement was, if they there was a particular they reason. They a half mile, they went a mile or so. So with it being, <clears throat> sorry, a mile, would it be competing businesses or just other commercial business? One mile within another small box store is defined in the ordinance. It's just, the, just that competing business. Is the, uh, is the current Dollar General room locked or the, uh, is there room at the space? There's probably not room to expand. Um, I mean, I'd have to, I, I don't know that I can actually speak to that. General. Legitimately, is that what I said? Um, but I, 
you know, to speak from staff's viewpoint and from doing some code enforcement stuff, I have had to contact Dollar General in our community in reference to some code violations, in reference to trash and debris blowing around their screening fence. Um, we've talked to the manager several times and I actually had to do an abatement notice for them. So, and I'm not sure that the current store would even, if I'd be able to get around with this. Um, so I guess the, you know, the, one of the questions is where, do, what do we want to see in the city? And uh, while I agree with some of Harlan's um, points and sales tax, we obviously live and die by it. But it's, it's a, there's a bigger question there, I think, and that's why this was brought forward. Um, it's kind of something I've heard for years in Perkins is the, these, two t these types of stores being next to each other and then one went out and then came back and built. And so that's why it's being I, I don't uh, and left an empty building that was rented, now it's sold. So it's just something that um, in speaking with the city attorney when we were discussing it that's being done in other parts of the country based on a lot of data that's been shared um, in reference to urban planning and land use and some possible effects of these types of stores. Um, there is a way they can do it. Um, they can absolutely absolutely do it. I can gar almost guarantee that a, that a uh, company as large as any of these small box stores has a business plan that complies with having 15% of their shelf space for fresh food. I know, I mean, I'm, I think that goes without saying. Whether they want to do it or not, I, I don't know. But um, that's that's why it was brought up by staff. I think. Oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead, Jason. Were you going to say something? Mm. Oh, um, I think the provisions in this um, do allow for opportunities for those as well, but in the parameters of what we want to see Perkins doing. Um, in my research, small box stores will, by a huge percentage, put regular grocery stores out of business in areas in a rural city like ours, and then that becomes a food desert. Um, I think it's important that we have fresh produce um, available, like the mayor does, and this isn't necessarily banning these from the city of Perkins, but it is creating a boundary and parameters in which we can encourage that type of business. And, and like Bob said, 15% is it's not a lot to ask for a store to provide what our top priority is. I agree with Commissioner Lebola. <clears throat> Justin, you have anything? Yep. Uh, anyone else? No, I agree with what's been said. <clears throat> I make a motion that uh, we approve. Do you? Can well, I just, sorry, do you want to discuss the one mile parameter further? Or is everyone comfortable with that? I, you, I think that I just was Rachel curious answered her question. Like, I mean, that really gave us a good visual. If you're okay with mm -hmm. that? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't have an issue with one mile. We might run out of space if we went any farther than that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, I make a motion that we approve ordinance. Uh, 492, an ordinance amending Perkins City Code Title 10, Planning and Zoning, Chapter 1, Definitions and General Provisions, Section 10-1-4, Definitions and Title 10, Planning and Zoning, Chapter 7, Establishment of Districts, Article C, Commercial District, Section 10-7C-3, Uses by Review, Yes. Sarah? Yes. Bottom? Abstain? Yes. Justin? Yes. Jason? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Number 13. Consideration, discussion, and possible action on declaring an emergency on ordinance number uh, 492.
Okay. I make a motion that we declare ordinance number 492 an emergency. A second. Mayor? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Uh, excuse me, Justin? Yes. Jason. Yes, ma'am. All right, number 14. Consideration, discussion, and possible action regarding use of grant scribe services. Mr. Ernst? I met with grant scribe and um, at the last meeting, the commission neglect, uh, declined to extend the agreement, so I talked to uh, grant scribe and they're willing to still work with us on a case-by-case -case basis. They're going to kind of look for grants. We're not going to have our weekly meeting necessarily, but if there's a grant we believe we can collaborate on them, we do an agreement at that time and bring it before the commission to, for a possible approval. So I think they'll still be around some and be wanting to help, but we won't be. I don't think there's any reason to spend the monthly fee because we spent $9,500 and, and realized zero. So. That's a real positive. That's a that's a positive thing for us, and I, I like think that, that uh, Commissioner Foth should feel good about that. Yeah, no, I, I, I love mean, that. I, I'm not, I'm just saying I'm you're one of the ones that reached out for them, and mm -hmm. and then you also agreed that well maybe we should. Yeah, I was disappointed in yeah. the lack of return on it, but I do like the possibility of continuing to work on work with them if there's an opportunity for us to receive. That, that's services. a good business practice that so. they've reached out with. I, I think it was a good idea to go with them to see what they could do. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You learned how much your staff is already <coughs> doing. Exactly. Do we uh, need to make a motion on that, or just it's no. just we're yeah. going to do that? Okay. <clears throat> Item agenda number fifteen: consideration, discussion, and possible action to approve contract in the amount not to exceed. Uh, Thirty-two thousand five hundred with Mears Engineering LLC for a hydraulic study utilizing ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act funds. The, this is a part of our water sustainability study with the Oklahoma Rural Water Association. Involves the need for an updated hydraulic analysis of the whole system. This would do that. Show us where weaknesses are, where we need storage, where we need larger lines. Um, could be a several any number of things. And it'll be a several month process, but we'll come out of it with a lot of information that can be used with future developments when they come into the planning phase. We'll kind of know that we have this infrastructure in place or we may need to upsize this line as part of a development to make sure everybody has um, the, the volume and quality of water they need. Okay. Good thing. Okay, I'm always going to ask. Gives a good direction going forward. All right. I make a motion to approve contract um, with Mears Engineering in an amount not to exceed thirty-two thousand five hundred for a hydraulic study utilizing the ARPA funds. I'll second. Sarah. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Mayor. Yes. Justin. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Sixteen. Consideration and discussion regarding comprehensive plan. Mr. Ernst. We've been um, working with OU. We got a grant through the OU planning department, um, working on the comprehensive plan. And on the 16th, which is Thursday, um, the landscape architecture students from OU and OSU are teaming up and they'll be in Perkins for a public event at the Old Church Center in the plaza. They're studying our parks um, sidewalks, things like that, to see what we can bring into the comprehensive plan and shoot for as far as park design, looking for money, different things like that. But we're really wanting um, citizen input and input from the commissioners. You all are obviously free to go to that meeting. Um, the students are going to have 12 stations set up where they're they're pretty much going to run it and talk to residents about what they may want to see at a park or what they don't want to see or strengths, weaknesses, and then they're going to take all that, um, compile it, and then work on it some more. So we've had a lot of good conversation, um, and we're looking forward to seeing what they come out with. 
I like it. I filled out the survey, and uh, I'm planning on being there. So. Good. And if you haven't filled out the survey, please do. I know they have had quite a few responses. Um, I haven't seen any of them. They, they'll give them all to us later, but um, it's a neat deal. They're really excited to be doing it. Is there anything like this anywhere else? Um, not right now, I don't think. Um, I think it's kind of an annual grant thing. I, I'm not 100% sure on that. The group that's working with us is not. This is their whole year. The first part and then the second part of the semester is their whole, whole year. So. so that's their whole semester type project? It's the, it's the plan. And it's their, wow. Like it's one grade from what I understand. Hmm. That's, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Do we just move on to the next one? There's no. Yeah, there's nothing to do here. Okay. Uh, number 17. Consideration, discussion, and possible action to ratify application to the Oklahoma Rural Water Association Rural Infrastructure Grant rig in the amount of $61,260 with a match of $12,200. $52 for an HX 30G VAC system with a 31 horsepower Briggs and Stratton, oh, excuse me, just Briggs, gas engine, 500 gallon spoils tank, 200 gallon water tank, and a 12,000 pound trailer. So, this, the rig grant is part of the Rural Water Association. Um, we initially, initially, we were told we, um, uh, qualified for the grant then we were told we didn't qualify for the grant and after some more research that was done by staff and talking to the Rural Water Association it was determined we do qualify for the grant but it was at the very end of their grant cycle so I completed the application and sent it in out of caution and this agenda item would be to approve the grant application for this piece of equipment. What this piece of equipment does is basically a huge vacuum cleaner for dirt and mud, and it will allow our staff to dig holes and locate utilities and work around water lines much more efficiently with less pressure on them physically. Let me just add to that. By the time that Bob learned, or really Bob convinced them that we um, qualified for this, uh, the application had to be in before today. Yeah. So we couldn't put it on the agenda for you. And um, typically I would not, this was my idea and that shocks me, that you ratify an action. Okay. <laughs> I always like you to do it up front. But um, it made a whole lot of sense here because it's a grant application. The question came up, it's $12,000. That's within his spending limit. And so we felt like this was something that um, we were pretty confident that you would want to have him apply for a grant. It's not saying that you're spending the money or you're committing the money. It's saying you put, you're ratifying the application for the grant. So that's, you're not going to see the word ratify on an agenda very often. Weren't we turned down for one around that same amount? Mm -hmm. for Water Resource Board? Yeah, I'll have to look it up. Well, is that the one where because first they said we qualified, and then they said we didn't. That's right, okay, that's right. Ah, so no, it's the same thing. So it kind of went, mm -hmm. I got you. Because it was the way they were calculating our population. Okay. That's what it was. Commissioners? Appreciate the effort. Do I need to drive it? Yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> well, you have to pull it with a truck. I can do that. <laughs> Sorry, I said Briggs and Stratton. I, yeah. <laughs> I used to sell the lawnmowers and it was, yeah. they were Briggs and Stratton. It's just a Briggs, I guess. Stratton dropped off. Okay. <laughs> oh. I, I make a motion to uh, approve that we ratify the application to the uh, Oklahoma Rural Water Association Rural Infrastructure Grant in the amount of $61,260 with a match of $12,252 for the VAC system. I second. Make a 
Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right, number 18. Consideration, discussion, and possible action regarding sales tax, tax incentive request from Beasley Technology Incorporated, a franchise of Dunkin' Donuts Franchising LLC. Staff? There's a letter in your packet that was written by Mr. Beasley um, in reference to the request for a sales tax incentive. I think he specified 50% uh, of the sales tax collected by that um, store, which is not, that, none of that data is in the letter, um, in order to locate a Dunkin' Donuts here, or possibly locate. I'm not sure which one. I think he's here to probably answer some of those questions for you. Sales tax incentives have been done before. Um, we did one with Williams, and it was a five-year agreement for a third, I think 33% of the sales tax that was brought in by that store. So if you were to approve, it's, it's basically an agreement that takes place. Um, and it's commonly, fairly commonly used tactic in uh, economic development. This percentage? I don't think this percentage is out of line, but I haven't studied, um, you know, other agreements. How long ago was that Williams agreement? 2009. It expired in 2014. Okay. And this one, they're asking for the half percent for three years. Five years, I believe. Yeah. Over the Six. Next four locations. Oh, thank you. And some of that, I don't know. Um, I haven't actually had a conversation with Mr. Beasley or anyone else affiliated with Lincoln Donuts, but I think those may be things that could ultimately be um, negotiated, or at least the commission could visit with, or direct me to visit with him about possible negotiations. I don't I don't know how that's up to them. We if we wanted to negotiate, do we do that now? Before we approve it? The action that I was um, contemplating that you want to take tonight because it's an agreement that would have to be reached that has not been reached is that you direct Bob and me to uh, attempt to reach and to negotiate an agreement and bring a, a proposal back to you. That doesn't mean that um, that you can't negotiate it or change the terms. Um, Should there be some consensus as to palatability before we spend time in an agreement like that? Well, that's if they want to give us some direction as to what um, their thoughts are. I mean, I think it might be some, and I would like to, I'd like to uh, have some discussion on not what the terms. Whether or not it's but a general terms, you know. Here's the thing. Here's some things that you could put in your agreement, just to give you guys some ideas about parameters for an agreement. Um, if they wish to have an. If agreement. they wish to have an agreement. Do you want to hear from whoever's here first? I think that would be here. Yes. I, I hear you. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Welcome and give Rachel your name and address and so we have it on record. Good evening. My name is Jeffrey Beasley. Um, thank you, Mr. Ernst. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for having us this evening. This is my wife, Dawn Beasley. We actually reside in Cushing and um, we own the Duncan Theater and Goto Fredo's Pizzeria and Tap Room. We learned about sales tax incentives um, through our hometown. Um, I'm actually running for commissioner, so I will not be eligible for an incentive, and Perkins will actually have a great advantage over Cushing moving forward, um, <laughs> if this is something we're able to move forward with. Um, at, the, at the Duncan Theater, we actually did a, a half, 50% sales tax incentive um, for up to 20 years. Um, we had major code um, uh, changes that we had to make. We actually spent three and a half million dollars on the Duncan Theater and Goto Fredo's, and had close to $600,000 just in code improvements that were required by the city in order to open. So we learned how, how sales tax incentives work there and um, the magic of that is beautiful. In, in 14 months, we actually raised well over $100,000 in Cushing sales tax, just the Cushing portion. Um, 
and so it was exciting to see how well that how well that's done. Um, we had a very successful first 18 months, and um, the city of Cushing actually just reimbursed us uh, the remaining portion of it. It was a quarter million dollar sales tax incentive over 20 years. So that's kind of how we became accustomed to that. I have the challenge of analyzing eight target locations from Dunkin' Donuts. And we have fought uh, to get Perkins on that list and to get Cushing on that list. Um, but alongside those is Perry, um, three in Stillwater, and two in Guthrie. And we've been awarded um, the opportunity to build uh, four of those target locations over the next three years. And so um, I personally would love to have a location in Perkins. Um, I think it could do really well um, on Highway 33, and I think it would be a great addition to Perkins, and um, I think it would be a great addition to Cushing. But if we, um, I, I received word back today from Cushing, the things that we need um, to accomplish there, it looks like they're going to be able to come through. Uh, the big thing in Cushing is power requirements, and they've, they've uh, notified me today that, that they're going to be able to, to meet those needs. Um, I was concerned if I'm running for commissioner, it means I'd have to pay for a transformer. And a transformer could be 20 grand right out of the gate. What does this sales tax incentive look like? I think on the low side, there's about a $75,000 advantage um, over five years. Um, on the high side, I would love to see the high side, obviously. That means that we're, we're doing well. But it could be as much as $150,000. Um, it's a small, a small amount in comparison to the inflation of construction materials, land cost, and the risk of putting a Duncan in, in Perkins, if we're really honest, um, in comparison to taking up another location in Stillwater or going to Guthrie off of the off of the uh, off of I-35. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of our thoughts. Uh, we'd love to be here, and uh, we're excited to own our first piece of property in Perkins if we can work something out. So that would be great. Do you guys have any questions? Is is there not a uh Another business that you're affiliated with that you could bring into Perkins that wouldn't compete with the donut shop that we already have here? We're more focused on coffee. Um, yes, we do have lots of donuts, and I do think it would affect the other business, um, but it didn't come based on donuts. It came on coffee. We were, it came from not having any coffee, great coffee options in Cushing is where, it, uh, where the uh, desire came from. A year and a half to finally get this to come through. So we were so excited. It came suddenly, as, you, as some of you know, we were, we're uh, remodeling Mayfie's right now. And so it was kind of like, hey, babe, uh, that was Duncan. <laughs> they want us. She's like, you got to be kidding me, you know. So it's uh, timing is always interesting, right? So um, but we'd love to be here. And uh, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't think that you can say the focus is coffee when the name of the store is Dunkin' Donuts. It's Dunkin' now, that's why they took the word donuts out. But yeah, you're right. It's um, just Dunkin' on the front? It's just Dunkin' on the front now, yeah. So, I get in trouble every time I get on the phone with them if I say donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, they're like, hey, that's not our brand, it's Dunkin'. It's like, okay, I apologize. But it, okay, but I, I say that because in your letter it says Dunkin' Donuts Franchising. That is actually their franchising company named Dunkin' Donuts Franchising LLC. Okay. Um, their brand is Dunkin'. Their, their brand is Dunkin'. Yep. So, um, we actually were, we were um, approved to open Ziggy's, and we got all the way down. Ziggy's is another coffee franchise. We got all the way down to the finish line, and I just had, I just had reservations. I think I thought, man, we can do better than this, and, and I think you guys probably have similar discussions in your city. It's like, is this the very best we can do? And that's, that was the question we asked ourselves, is this the very best we can do? And uh, my wife and I both decided to be patient. And, and hold off, and that was about six months ago um, that we, we just held off, and sure enough, we were able to get the brand that we really wanted. And We also have a, a coffee place that's looking for an inside sit-down place that's already currently serving Perkins right now. Okay. So I, that, those are just some concerns I, I have. Uh, I'm not making a decision right now. Is this an inside type deal? Yeah, it'll be inside and, and drive through. The big thing I want you guys to look there, and because I, I totally recognize I don't want to pull away local business, but what Duncan will do for the city of Perkins is you will have new sales tax revenue because of Duncan. This, people will stop at Duncan because it's Duncan. And it's the reason why Duncan works in Perkins simultaneously as Cushing, 
because people want that fix and you have a lot of people that are driving through Perkins right now that are waiting to get to whatever fix that is. It might probably be in Stillwater. There's a good chance that they're waiting to get to Stillwater to have whatever that morning fix is. Probably Dutch Brothers, right? That's going to be my biggest competitor um, in Stillwater as we, as we approach that. So, um, but I think that's the biggest thing that you have to ask yourself, what new revenue are we going to receive um, by bringing in Duncan to our community? Love to be with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you, you coming to Commissioners. My question, just for now. Okay, Williams, just comparing the sales tax. I don't know the right word. Incentive. Incentive. Thank you. <laughs> it was... A third of the um, a third cent sales tax, a third of the sales tax for five years, correct? A third of the city's portion, yes. And that was in two thousand nine. Granted, times are different now, and I understand that. But what would that relate to now? Is that is this a good timeline? Is this a good? I mean, fifty percent of it versus a third. Is that comparable? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I, that, can be, that. that can be negotiated. The terms of that could be negotiated if we could. If have they're interested in negotiating, I mean, I think Commissioner Cox brings up a good point. Is the time frame when that happened? It even states in the agreement that um, that Perkins was experiencing budget limitations by reason of failure of tax revenues to generate sufficient funds. We're also looking at. I believe I don't want to misspeak. Misspoke or speak was Piggly Wiggly on the way out, we were looking at an empty building? Huge empty I, don't, building. I don't know that. Um, Is that what make it? Not, not, I think the same argument could be made today okay. that was made in 2009. Because okay. um, well, I mean, we live and die by sales tax. We do. So my understanding is, is if this passes, then you have the opportunity to negotiate with them. So we're simply allowing the negotiations to take place if we approve this tonight. Well, if, if right now, yeah, I mean, we, we wrote the agenda item really broadly. So I was just contemplating that you would, if your action would be to direct us to do something. To so put together some type of proposed agreement. But, um, or proposed list of considerations for you. I mean, however you would want to direct us. Um, we I don't mean to cut you off. I mentioned it earlier. We're growing. We all know it. Everyone knows it. And I'm not saying no to this at all. I, I think healthy competition is good if it's done in the right way. Also with that, aspect of it though I feel like we have to be careful in the direction we go with this because as we are growing this may set the precedent for what we do later and or what may come in later mm -hmm. I don't like the use precedent I, I, I think I really that don't think it does you guys get to do every commission gets to do what every commission chooses to do in the best interest of the city and you're not held to precedent, you, you know, you, you, you're not held to say, well, we gave, Thank we you. gave Williams one, so now we have to. We maintain we, the authority to you, say yes or no to any agreement. Just letting you know that. I mean, I'm going to defend your right to, to do whatever you think is best in that, that situation. Time. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, because I have felt that same way, and then to hear this conversation, it makes me take that pressure off. Of I'm glad we had that conversation. I'm glad it came. No, I'm glad. Thank you. So, what if I would like to continue this so that it, there could be further research um, and thought on in the direction we should go on this? My, you my, need a motion. motion. Let me. Can I? Can I just throw some stuff out? Absolutely, so please do. Um, I'm too short. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I know it doesn't go up high enough. <laughs> I forgot my chair. I was running late. Or my your book. Your, Bumbo. They don't make um, them anymore. There's an encyclopedia. I get it every oh. month. <laughs> <laughs> the chair doesn't come up. Um, so you have the Williams agreement. It's a two-page agreement. 
And then I provided you with one that I did in, for another city a while back. Um, I've done a few of them. Did you guys get the I Williams Agreement? The, I, didn't I apologize. I just got it today. Well, I have the Williams Agreement. That's what I'm saying. But I don't know if you guys got the Williams. The, no. Everybody else got the Williams oh, Agreement. Really I just re I requested it. Oh, you so. got, oh, look at I you. Them, but I You're so good. Just awesome. I, I just, yeah, I just, uh, yesterday. Yes. And um, Excuse me. some of the things that you can consider, is, well, you can put more parameters around this agreement. It's not just for five years you get this. You know, you uh, if you look at the agreement that I, and I've, I've done some complicated ones, and I gave you a simple one. Mm -hmm. um, but you can say, okay, it's estimated. How many, I mean, one thing that I haven't heard is how many jobs is this going to? It's 20. It says 20. Is that up? Yeah, in the letter. It says 20. I have heard that in the letter. Um, then you can, you can hold them to that. You know, as long you get the tax incentive as long as you're providing 12 jobs. You get the tax incentive as long as, um, you, you know, you get the, the incentive. It, above a certain amount. We're not going to give it for every dollar that you bring in, but if you bring in more you know, a certain amount, then we give it above that particular amount. Uh, you can do it, um, what was the other thing? Oh, you can limit how much you, you have to pay all the time. You can say five years or X dollars, whichever comes first so that you're limiting your exposure. You know you have a maximum amount that's okay. We, we would like, if you, if you decide we would like to support this particular um, or encourage this particular type of business, but we don't want to pay more than Y dollars for it, then you just you put that in the agreement, you know, up to a certain amount. Um, and, and over five years, we're doing for X years, which is also negotiable. Mm -hmm. um, but over that period of time, if they're doing really, really well, then you might you might have put in your contribution by three years and we're done. If they're doing really poorly, they may never get you know that much money. And so this agreement, if you choose to to have one. Um, can have more terms than just what we what we did with the Williams agreement, and more than what's necessarily. And I don't want to just make it real complicated, but I want you to understand that that you have options here as to what the ultimate what you ultimately will pay. Well, that helps me. What they ultimately need to do to provide. You, you can say, okay, you're saying you're going to invest X thousand dollars, million dollars. In building this, that's a condition that you actually invest a certain amount of money in in building something. Yeah. So there's a lot of options that you have. There's probably some that I haven't thought of or that aren't in this particular agreement. But, you know, the sample agreement I gave you. But um, it's not typically something that's done in a day. It is something that is. But it, I will also say it is not uncommon for growing cities to get tax incentive development agreements. I just, I just didn't, I wish it didn't compete with our little small town atmosphere that we already have, and we already have donuts and coffee in our town. Do we have it exactly like that in one little building? No, we don't. Do I wish some things were different and bigger? Yes, I do. But see running some mom and pop people out of town that's been here for years and have contributed to our community in lots of various ways. That, for me, that's big. And I do believe in healthy competition. Absolutely. I'm a coach. <laughs> believe in healthy competition. What? I have the same concern. I also would like to see if there were incentives or something to nail down, like you said, some of these other little issues that would, could push, you know, the jobs or the, you know, putting those different parameters on it where it, 
I would it would help me feel better about it. Yes. That would help me feel better yes. too, just and straightforward. I will say, I mean, I, I haven't seen the numbers, but I know that we have some businesses in town who their hours are based upon they, they can't get people to work. Is that because, and I'm speaking from my background, is that because they are smaller independent businesses and so they don't provide and benefits? This, yes, this is, that's so also been a part of my thought process. That's, that was going to come out next because, I mean, I want to consider all sides of it before making a decision. I just, at the forefront of my brain is, I wish it was something a little different in our city. I mean, the median age... I think the median homeowner age here in Perkins is 32. The average person has one and a half children sometime in their 20s. So we have a lot of young families here in Perkins. They need to provide their children with benefits. So they're going to look for job opportunities that provide those things. I, too, am a big component of healthy business competition. Um, and I think that it would be important to continue to negotiate and allow the agreement to move forward so that we can see if this can be one of those places here in Perkins, a business here in Perkins that does provide 20 jobs, potentially some of those positions are going to have benefits, and then Perkins is going to profit off of that sales tax. And an incentive agreement is the cost of business. And so you don't know if you don't ask, they're asking. We can enter into negotiations and kind of see where this goes and then make a final decision because they may all of the to negotiate something that works for them and then we haven't we haven't it doesn't hurt to talk it doesn't hurt to continue the conversation that I agree with mm -hmm. and I think mr. Beasley Beasley said um, that he's looking for a location off of highway 33 so it's not on our main strip where we have a lot of those mom and pop businesses, it is right there where we have other chained, um, you know, national chained businesses. And so that's another thing oh, to consider. I, I, I don't, that would be the one statement I, I do agree with as far as that goes. I mean, we maintain our people from, hometown. people from Cushing headed to Stillwater or people from Guthrie Stillwater headed to Cushing, they're not going to turn down and go south on 177 to go get a donut. Right. Or if they, if they are doing that, this location is not going to change their direction to right. do that. I mean, there's lots of mom and pop donut shops that thrive in inner city areas where they have those giant chains all over the place because some people just prefer that. In addition to that, we should consider other businesses, but they also have the opportunity to come here and speak to us and give us their opinion. And that's another reason why I would like to continue it. I just, do we, do you want to go for a continuance or do you want to go in, how do we state that and make it a negotiation process or? I think staff would need some direction. Um, direction. Yeah, because Autumn brought up Let's see how different general yeah. things. The two things that stand, that stand out to me are the parameters of, you know, making sure there are a certain amount of jobs that would come with the business and it would be, the, the half cent sales tax is the thing that kind of weighs on me a little bit. If we could find a compromise, a compromise exactly. Uh, and where the city would profit more. I don't know. That Those are just things that give me a little bit of hesitation. I'd like to see a half cent sales, or a half sales tax for three years and 23 jobs. I think that that's... I'm sorry. Uh, half sales tax for three years and 23 jobs. What's, What's so the 23 number? Yeah, why 23? Oh, just better number. Just random. Okay. It's a good crime number. I, I, I don't have a it's okay. I just, I, I, I was just very curious. I, I do mean, feel I mean, better about the three years. The three years, I mean, either a smaller amount of years or a smaller percentage is kind of what weighs on me, but, you know. I think there's another way to structure it if, with the X number of years or X dollars, whichever comes first. And yeah, I okay. mean, I'm open to any of those conclusions. I just want to... It's probably the direction I would prefer to go if 
but it's not my decision. But much like the previous agenda item, it's kind of setting the tone for Perkins and the argument can also be made that growth begets growth. And uh, when you're it's not growing, you're dying. Yeah, yeah so it's, not, it's not setting a precedence, Jason, necessarily, but it is creating kind of a track record of how I think that's well, probably the same thing of how yeah. Perkins of how yeah. Perkins encourages other businesses. Mm -hmm. to do that. And so we need to think, I, I need to think about that as well with this decision, um, is how will this decision impact other larger businesses and their attraction to Perkins? Mm -hmm. You said that much, much better than what you but said exactly what I was trying to get at. Thank you. I work with, <laughs> I just I to her friend. I keep, I keep going back to one of our meetings with Mark, and we're putting all the sticky notes up on the wall. We're listing where we want to go and what we want to do. We're doing our mission statement and our goals. And I can't remember exactly who said it, but it was like, we don't want to come in. We, we want to bring in new businesses, but we don't want them to be overly competitive and shut down the existing businesses we have. And that's where I'm just in a, I need more information than and I think, I think that this, I think giving them direction to continue on with negotiations does allow us to gather more information. Okay. In my opinion, am I, am I, am I well, misunderstanding I, I, that? Well, no, I, I, prior okay. to entering into some, in my, I mean, we can enter into negotiations, but I think we're both in the dark, Me, being myself and Mr. Beasley, because I've heard a commissioner say he wants three more jobs in three years, and I've heard commissioners say they're not necessarily interested because it competes with businesses, so I don't know what to negotiate. So we need to make then a list of or some or options. The option could be you're just going to think about it and think about it. Could I give you some? Could I could I give you some winning feedback from your end that would work well? That would win. On our, that would Absolutely. Be, I'm get a yes. I mean, Tammy, is he allowed to, oh, Tammy, is he allowed to do that? Yeah, he, he can interrupt you. He just can't interrupt the staff. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it, you guys get to decide if he's... I, I would like to hear what he has to say. From I don't him. want to shut anybody out or come in here and be like, I've already decided. I want to, I want to be open-minded and listen. So, Time is of the essence, so that's it is important. I would rather I would rather negotiate against myself and then and still have this as an opportunity, than have time negate the opportunity, you know, on its own. Um, I, 150,000 was was my goal. That was my goal in return over five years. So to make that as a cap would be we would be totally open minded to that. Um, you want me shooting towards that cap because that's a very aggressive. You know, it's a very aggressive number. Um, the 75,000 in return um, is the bare minimum, like shoot, we tried. You know, it, it covered a few of the things that we weren't expecting because we've already started to cost out and look at land cost and, um, and look at what those possibilities look like. Um, this project will be well over a million. I mean, it, it will be probably in the 1.2 range uh, for Perkins when it's all said and done. Um, so we would be willing to commit to spending a million dollars, you know, if that's something that we need to negotiate there. Um, I get very concerned about the number of jobs because I'm new to this and I want to make sure that I, that I under promise and over deliver. So a, you know, are those full-time jobs or those part-time jobs or those, you know, um, so we have 93 employees at Goto Fredo's, uh, pizzeria and tap room and, and the Duncan theater. Um, we offer full benefits, 401k, that's our style. How do we keep those, those folks employed? We develop a culture where they want to be. We don't have problems keeping staff because we create a, a place that people want to be. Um, Are you open Monday through Friday? We're open, we're open Monday through, all the way through Saturday, and um, the movies are open on Sunday. Um, the Duncan hours are 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. is what I'm noticing from a nationwide perspective. Um, and, and in places like Stillwater on like Thursday to Saturday, the location we're looking at there, we'd be open until 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. So just long, long hours, which helps meet those, you know, make some big promises on employees. But 
I want to be careful. Um, are you, are you looking at full time, part time, and are there going to be benefits? I, I think there will be benefits, and I and I think that um, fifteen is probably a safe number, you know, for that. Full time staff. It won't be full time. Just 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 staff. You want to take as much. I like taking as many full time as possible. Um, I, it's just it's just easier to replicate that way. And in these early phases, just so you kind of know where I'm going, I want to build out like ten to twenty of these. So. This is not, I'm just getting started, and this is our home, you know, Cushing and Perkins, I want to be our home base. So um, you're going to see, it, it, don't be surprised if we build both Cushing and Perkins, if we get approval from you at the very same time. And um, I think that that's healthy, because it gets us really moving down the road quickly, gets us trained up, me included, on, on what this lifestyle looks like, and then we can start building out from there. But those are things that would be wins. Um, Try to help you guys from that perspective. Thank you. Um, thank you. That was very helpful. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So, one thing to keep in mind with the uh, local businesses already here, they have their customer base. That's right. They have a dedicated customer base. They may lose some at the very How late moment. are they open? The current ones? It's spotty. Until uh, they run out. Um, I, I don't know. That's why I say it's spotty. Yeah, it is. Because it depends on Saturday morning whether I get a donut or not when I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's... I'm going to get some brownies. Um, they have their base. They may, they may lose for a little bit, exploring. But they have their home base. So if we were to create some sort of cap, like you were talking about, a, a lump sum that we would pay back over a five-year period, how do we say that? What does the look like for that? Not to exceed. Not the, but um, with the numbers that the they've given us. Sell, sell tax. Okay. The, the total the, sales the, tax and center not to exceed. Yeah, the, the agreement would terminate um, when the total sales tax contribution paid by the city to the company, so which is how you, you would be, when he says 150000 he's talking about money that he pays to you that you send back to him, mm -hmm. basic, or basically. Um, and so when you've paid back to him $150,000 or five years or three years have passed, it's terminated. Whichever comes first. So a if we, third on 10, that's another, you know, a third of the tax on 10 years, that's another negotiation that we would be open to. Because we're here for the long haul, right? So yeah. that would be helpful. Working. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. Can, can I ask a question? Absolutely. What do you feel about it? I think a lot of places do sales tax incentives. Um, I think Perkins has been really good at building residential and our housing is exploding. I think cities, the heart of the, the government lives and dies on sales tax. And I think, I think Perkins proximity to Stillwater is one of our greatest positives. And I think it's also one of our greatest negatives because you can, it's 10 miles away. And I think the same argu argument can be made in our proximity to Stillwater or Cushing. Um, so I think we may need to do things that incentivize these businesses to come into Perkins. Um, because if he's looking at building four of eight, I think is what he said. And he's got, he's looking at Cushing, or Cushing's Guthrie, and still one of them. They have a lot more people um, to build something, which would make them probably more attractive. But I think we're kind of wide open, and I do think we're missing a ton of traffic on 33. Because I think, and I also think there's a difference between a food truck that sells coffee. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think there's a big difference in a brick-and-mortar 
concrete parking lot with a sit down. And I don't know what the sit down looks like necessarily, whether it's two it seats sit or down. 20. Yes, ma'am. These are the new Duncan's. Yeah. Okay. And an established name. Right. So, and I also think, you know, when McDonald's came in, and Harlan can speak to this, you know, they were projected to do whatever it was, a million, but they did more, they did a lot more than that. And then I think growth begets growth. I mean, you know, they projected, uh, McDonald's USA projected a million to, they did 2.2 the first year. So, Sorry. But it's hard to get people to believe that. And, and it's just a few miles to Stillwater and the cost of the costs the cost of building commercial we've grown residentially, but we haven't grown for, with new businesses. And the people are driving to Stillwater, pushing or gathering. And and I don't have anything against the current donut shop. I think they do a great job. I love it. And I think I think they'll keep a lot of their base because of their location. I mean, they come in, they work long hours, they're up in the middle of the night, literally. And, but, and I also think that Duncan is more of a coffee with a donut versus a donut with a coffee. I think there is a difference there. Well, they've successfully rebranded that franchise. And if you go into Oklahoma City or you go into Tulsa, you have those Dunkin' Donuts. So we've got college kids that are going 10 miles from us, many of whom are from those big cities, and that's what they're used to. I don't want to get into the weeds of how somebody runs their business or looking at their business plan or anything like that, but let's just consider those college kids here that 10 miles away, there's a Dunkin' Donuts, and you know what? Dutch Bros isn't that good. And so they want to come down here to get their Dunkin' Donuts. What else does that look like? Are they shopping at our boutique shops? Are they hanging out at Pistol Pete's house? Um, Harlan Wells has an interest in Onkyo in town and he sells donuts. The donut shop sells donuts. Casey sells donuts. William sells some sort of donuts. Everybody loves donuts. I've had a donut 15 years. If I could give you one quick comment. When, when Casey's came in, I, I own the OnQ building in downtown Perkins, and OnQ manages it. When Casey's came in, that affected us dramatically. But I didn't go to anybody and say, hey, protect me. And actually what happened, we spent money, bought the lot in, uh, north of there, put a drive-in window, spent money updating ours that made us better. And they did come in, and then they're getting business that we weren't getting in the first place. It's going down Highway 33. So it's the business, you know, I don't know how you do that, because I, I couldn't come to you and say, don't let Casey's come in here. It's just not business, is it? No. I mean, you just, business is business, and you just have to modify it and so, do the best you can. In making a motion to have <clears throat> the staff uh, negotiate. I'm going to just throw something out, though, and I know we, different ones of you have discussed this with me. I'm going to be the Debbie Downer, um, the Tammy Trouble. Um, but um, I love the way you're analyzing this because you're still being protective of your downtown. And I, there are so many Oklahoma towns and cities, and Cushing is a huge example in my mind of one that has provided incentives for their highway businesses and decimated their downtown. Um, and so you want to be careful about that, and I know you are. I know that you are, and that's the other reason why I'm, I was saying to Jason, I'll protect your right to do it either way. Because down the road, you may be saying, yeah, we really don't want to incentivize this on the highway because it will affect things. And so you, you really do. I think you're, you're spot on. But I just want you to keep that big picture, too. So. Well, and that's why I, I would like for staff to negotiate. But what I need to know is, do you need to know from us tonight the parameters of that, of that, or do we? 
What we can do, if you want, is bring back, he's kind of said what he wants, wants to do. What he's proposing, we can bring that back to you okay. in a written form. Um, because we've already, I mean. Either of you want to give us, I don't know that you can, that you can, as a body. I think he's okay. kind of negotiated, but we can take time to we yeah, but it's still, it's still going to be in your hands to bring it back. It's, I was just trying to, I guess you just let Sarah word it. Well, I just want to say one other thing. Let's not forget that time is not necessarily on our side with this decision in that we're competing with the other surrounding areas and locations that he's looking to franchise these at. And that's, I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah. So can I clarify something? Yeah. Just in my mind on this. If we approve item, what is it, 18? Mm -hmm. There's not anything to approve. That was my question. <laughs> so where, it, so it, if we approve or do if we go ahead with this, does that say yes to them coming? Or does that say yes to the agreement that we'll come to an agreement later? Is, you see what I'm asking? It depends on what kind of motion is made, I think. That's what I was asking, is what kind of censors? Well, you can't approve a request. It's a request. You've got to approve the agreement. Mm -hmm. We don't have an agreement. We don't have a written agreement. Written but this would approve the ability you to get approved. that, correct? You, you, what I would say is direct direct staff to, <laughs> to draft an agreement. If you want to uh, say draft an agreement that is exactly what he's proposed, then um, you know, we can do that. I, I time, feel, is, time is of the essence. It's up to you. Which is why I asked the question. I feel like he has been in the meeting and has heard some of our concerns. So he has the ability to therefore put, por, put forth a proposal that he's comfortable with and that gives us the option that if it if we are comfortable with it, then we can move forward. Yeah, I, I mean, am I, am I wrong? In I mean, I agree with Commissioner. Can ask him if he agrees with us, with your statement, and if he has any additional input. I mean, he's here. He's heard the things that we're saying. He knows what's comfortable for him. The ball's really in his court to put forth the proposal, and then then we can make a decision based off of what he's comfortable with, and if it fits our parameters, then. Can I ask you what your preference would be on? So I would like to see a max of 150. Would you rather see that over five years and a half, or would you rather see it over 10 years and a third? That's really, and then I think I can give you the other things that you're asking for, but is there, it sounds to me like the third is easier for you to swallow, right, versus the half. The, it num is not. the number is for me, but I will be honest with you, sir, I teach pre-K for a living, so those numbers are extremely high in my head. I, can't, I, I, I teach them to count to 20. So I'm not a mathematician. I don't know what those numbers look like over the long term. So I, don't, I can't honestly say that I know one is better than the other. I just, the per this percentage makes me feel I, 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 I don't was, know. I was right there with uh, Commissioner Henniger. I was, I was wanting less years and... <laughs> And less percentage. Okay. But I mean, there's a com I mean, there's compromise in everything. So. Sure. I mean, I could go with I could stay with the five years, but at thirty, a third. No, I'm sorry, did I said that wrong. I think you said it right. A third. A, a third. third. A third. Five yeah. years. Yeah. Five years. Five years. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of. What are you contemplating the income to be, the sales tax income to be on this? On the, on the low side, um, six to 800,000 revenue. So do the, do the math on that. What are we at? 4%, right? Six to 800,000. 3.38. 3.38. There's people in there for that. Yeah, I'm like, I teach them to count to 20, you guys. We did six seconds today, if that helps you. We don't know how to run a clock. And add a zero, so. I know where my, I know where my fault is. this for six seconds, is what I'm saying. Could we do a third at seven years? I think that gets us there as well. Six and five. Now remember, we would set it up where the time, if he, if he gets to 150, he's done. Mm -hmm. 
could be still be less than seven. On the, we just have more would time be, to get yeah, 250. If you that's how Cushing went. We, they, we had a max, we had a cap of 250. But if you look at the run rate, I was at over 100. I had over 100 in return. And, you know, it, now that was for the city, so it would have been right around 50,000 in return at half. You run that times 20 years, and I blew it out of the water, right? And so, and, and I helped develop that one. We protected the city by having a maximum exposure, you know. So the, uh, the amount of employees, and when I asked for benefits, you, you said, I think. Because I'm still learning. It depends on what Duncan, what Duncan allows. So I know that there's benefits for management for sure. So. And how many managers would you have? Um, it depends on how many stores in them at that moment. So there's less managers when there's only one or two stores, and so as it grows, it continues to it continues to grow. So at ten at ten stores, you're talking. So, yeah. but would a full time employee have benefits? Not even if they're not a manager. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. My preference is yes, because all of my employees, privately on the private sector, all have benefits. So, and I run a, a similar restaurant on the private side that's not nearly as empowered as Duncan would be. And you're, you're so signing cool. into a franchise agreement where right. they kind of give you the parameters and the structure of how this is going to be ran. So it's, it's not like an independent business. That's why, I can, that's why I can tell you that your high level management would have benefits because I have the ability to structure that however I see fit, right? Um, they call it above level management or above, above restaurant managers. So um, are you, you have to take applications from our city for yeah. that? Absolutely. You're going to bring someone in from corporate or from wherever. They'll start from Cushing. So, you know, I've already have, have two folks there that I'm starting to develop. And, um, and then being in Perkins early, that gives you such a huge opportunity to be, the, to be that leadership team, right? Those, those folks that we hire from here because we're all learning together and I need leadership to help continue to grow that and being close to home. I mean, Perkins is home, just like you guys are right here in my backyard, you know. It's easier to hire somebody if they live in the proximity of your business because you know they're going to show up. Oh, you typically know that they're going to show up for work. But you just, you just, that, I ask that question because it is a large chain, and they do transfer and move people around. They have no, yeah, they haven't made any indication that that's going to happen, and that would be a huge turnoff to me, personally, because this, this is about growing communities and, grow, and, and creating job opportunities. And that, that's what we get excited about. So, um, I don't know if I mentioned we have 93 employees currently. So, it's a lot, it's a lot to handle. So, I'm sure. it really is the most rewarding part of what we do. The way the form and the agreement that I proposed to you as an example is worded it says, for my permits, or the way I would, let me just say, the way, way you might want to consider wording this is that the company provides permanent seasonal and part-time employment opportunities a minimum of and then pick the number. That way it's, it, you know, because you're going to have kids, high school kids, um, you know, in the summer or what I, I could see, you know, and so if you want a bigger number, pick a bigger number with that consideration, but it, it gives them more flexibility as to how many people they hire and when because you know, that, that's, just a, that's just a thought. And the 15 is healthy because it keeps, it keeps us from manipulating that number when, if you're stressed, right? Because you want to hire full-time people if you can. So what businesses will do is they'll hire a whole bunch of really small jobs, you know, part-time jobs. That's not healthy. You want to get, and that's the reason why I say 15 is a very comfortable number because if you look at the number of hours we have to be open, that this should not be a hard number to hit. And it's a real number. I mean, it's, it's a big game for Cushing. 15 jobs is a lot of jobs. So I would, I would be excited to see, I would be excited to see the same incentive come across the desk in Cushing, right? So that would, and so I've tried, I'm trying to provide something that's beneficial to both. We don't want to be a regret three years from now, right? So. Sustainability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I like Change it. my mind. Okay, so we're doing one third over seven years. I mean, I think it's a good with fifteen jobs. Or are we putting jobs in there? Is there is there a cap? A hundred cap. Yeah, the cap. The cap at hundred. So we can reach that cap. We're we don't, we're not set with that seven years. Is that correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. The job comes first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good discussion. 
And we would agree to those terms. So, you know, you're not wasting your time. If you present a proposal that looks like that, we will build in Perkins. So, um, so there you go. Can I clarify, are we talking about 15 permanent jobs, full-time jobs, or 15? 15 jobs would be what we would prefer. Like seasonal and part-time? Yes, okay. ma'am. I'm uncomfortable telling somebody how they should design their business. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable with that. That's not what we're here you to do. You say jobs, if you want. Say the jobs. Okay. I mean, 15 okay. jobs, that's, okay. and then they decide okay. what they... But yeah, I mean, I'm not going to tell somebody. Else. Do we list benefits in there anywhere, or we're just going to go with that upper with management? I think what it's too it? hard for us to negotiate mm -hmm. with the franchise structure okay. on whether mm -hmm. or not they are benefited. But I mean, that's just a big. I mean, that's going to be. I agree, but I don't know that we can. I don't know that we can. I mean, I don't. It's like Sarah said. I don't know that we can require that. If if it was Mrs. Hensley's independent business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's a chain, like the chain element of it, the franchise element of it. Okay. That's my opinion. And I think we've made it very clear that we would prefer also that they have benefits. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> they would, I think we all agree. We, Mr. Beasley and us prefer that if there's a, a way for them to be benefited employees, that you know that would be ideal. But it's maybe not Blue Cross Blue Shield this month. Right. <laughs> 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 <Or subject. laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, the estimated annual revenue? Um, estimated on, the, on the low side, six to seven hundred. Um, and that's, that's one of the drawbacks to Perkins is that they're concerned about population. Um, I need this to be at like 1.2. So that's what we're, that's really where we're focused. So, and they say that it's feasible and they see the traffic count, it's there, but the population of Perkins does not support, you know, the, rev the revenue streams that they usually like to see. So, so you're banking on the traffic. I, I just know what Perkins is. I mean, like, just what, what you guys know Perkins, I know that that's what Perkins is, and I know that it works. So um, we looked at, we had a location in Chandler right off the turnpike. I know it would work. It, they will not approve it. They don't, they, don't see the, they don't see the benefit in it. I'm like, okay, so I respect that, and, you know, I respect their science is really accurate, but we also know, I know how I feel when I drive through Perkins on the way to Stillwater and, and, and back, and I'm like, hey, I wish I had X, Y, Z, right? You guys can fill in the blanks. This is one of them, so I think it will work. Thank you for your input. Thank you. Okay. I am not friends with words, so. so. We are, at this point, only making a motion that we can come up with an agreement or direct staff to direct staff. Mm -hmm. We're not voting on them coming into town right now. I just, you just direct staff to um, draft an agreement as discussed, and we bring it to you. Next it's thirty days. Yes, sir. That's fine. Sir. Are we ready for me? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Go for it, friend, with words. I make a motion to direct staff in order to what? Draft. To draft an agreement with Beasley Technology Incorporated for the purposes of putting a Dunkin' Donuts a Duncan franchise in at Perkins under the parameters that they would have a one-third over seven-year tax incentive with a cap of $150,000. Perkins, what do you say? And a minimum of how many jobs? And a minimum of 15 jobs. Could you say that last franchise in Perkins? Yeah, they to direct staff to draft an agreement with Beasley Technology in for purposes of putting a Duncan franchise in Perkins. With the parameters of a sales tax incentive of one third percent over seven years with a cap of 150000 And 15 jobs. Is it one third? It's one third of the total sales tax, right? Not one third percent. 
one third of the city's portion. He said one third of the Sorry. city's portion. She meant. Sorry. One third of the percent is a lot better for us. Yeah, one third of the percent. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I haven't had a cookie. I'll second. One third of the percent over 40 years. <laughs> I was going to read it back to you one time just to be sure that I captured. Sarah moved to direct staff to draft an agreement with Beasley Technology, Inc. for purposes of putting a Duncan franchise in Perkins with the parameters of a sales tax incentive of one-third of the city's portion over seven years with a cap of $150,000 and a minimum of 15 jobs. Do we need to put the phrase, whichever comes first, at the end of... Mm -hmm. Or $150,000. I'll put it in the Whichever agreement. Oh, okay. okay. it's understood. It doesn't have, the motion doesn't have to be that specific. Okay, so we're good. All right. Sarah. Yes. Oh, Justin. Oh, did you get a second? Yes. Justin. Justin. Sorry. Thank you, Justin. Justin? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, and you're doing a really good job with your, your Fredos. Thank you. Thank you. That's where I'm headed now, Valentine's dinner. So. Oh. <laughs> I got it. Eight o'clock. Hey, Trent. Sorry, babe. <laughs> okay, number 19. Consideration, discussion, and possible action to declare 21 Fire Department helmets purchased in 2009 as having no value due to safety regulations and to authorize the city manager to dispose of and remove same from the city's fixed asset system. These items will be destroyed by throwing them in the trash. They're not safe to be used against right. regulations. Just a formality. Formality removed from assets. Okay. The same is true for the next two items. The ordinance is actually require you to do this. So. <laughs> we have to do it with the schools and in, in the military. Yeah, it's so uh, I make a motion that uh, we declare 21 fire department helmets as having no value uh, to safety and to authorize city manager, Mr. Ernst, to dispose and remove from the city's fixed asset system. I'll second. Mayor? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sarah? Yes. Justin? Yes. Jason? Yes. Number 20, consideration, discussion, and possible action to declare uh, 47 self-contained breathing apparatuses, cylinders valued at 4,000, a surplus, and to authorize the city manager to dispose of same in accordance with Oklahoma law and to remove from the city's fixed asset system. Mm -hmm. Will you be selling these? Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. We'll 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 I didn't think we were using this. Those would be sold in accordance with the surplus requirements. Okay. Okay. Any questions, anybody else? Mm -hmm. I hate jumping the gun and I'll let you say what you say. I make a motion that we declare 47 self contained breathing apparatuses uh, as surplus and to have the city manager dispose of them in accordance with Oklahoma law and remove from the city's fixed asset system. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Justin. Yes. Jason. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma Twenty-one. Consideration, discussion, and possible action to declare four police department computers purchased in 2018 mm -hmm. as having no value to security precautions, and to authorize the city manager to dispose of and remove same from the city's fixed asset system. No, that ain't good. No, that ain't good. Nobody. Just, okay. I'm always going to ask, guys. Go for it. I make a motion that we declare four police department computers 
as having no value due to security precautions and to authorize the city manager to dispose and remove same from the city's fixed asset system. Second. Mayor? Yes. Jason? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. 22. Consideration, discussion, and possible action to select one or two nominees for open positions on the Board of Trustees of the Oklahoma Municipal Assurance Group or OMAG. I just need advice on this one. I mean, I don't know the people, so. I got, I got nothing. I don't need it. And this would be if one of you would want to serve on the OMAG to be considered as a nominee for serving on the board of the Oklahoma Municipal Assurance Group, which is our insurance provider. We're not required to provide someone for the board. No, it's just an opportunity. Exactly. So if nobody wants to do it, is it no action? I think I would, I think I would consider that maybe after I had some more experience mm -hmm. under my belt. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm still new. I don't know what I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm actively taking things off my plate. <laughs> We've noticed, Commissioner Foe. Just saying. So, are we being no action on, on 22? I don't think my husband would appreciate me if I took on something else. Especially Well, you know, that's what it is. All right, number 23, consideration, discussion, and possible action to nominate one or two candidates to the Board of Trustees of the Oklahoma Municipal Insurance Group, or OMEG. Is this same, or we got no, these people here? If somebody wanted to do it, you had to select them, we would have to push and nominate them in our minutes for them to be nominated. Okay. So I don't. So is that a, that would be a pass? You ready for twenty four? Uh, consideration, discussion, and possible action to review letters of interest and select candidate for Perkins Industrial Development Authority, Trust 1, open appointed <coughs> trustee position with term ending April 30th, 2023. What order can Nothing. No. Do you want this to continually be on the agenda? Well, I, I've noticed that, Bob. Um, It doesn't bother me that it's in there, but I mean, we got April 2023 is coming up pretty soon, and it's just going to roll over again. Um, it's out there that there's an opening. I've asked around. Um, I feel like the horse is going to be that pretty bad. I do too. I don't know. Take it off for a while and then put it back down in April. <laughs> term. I mean. <laughs> Is there something on our website that says that we've got this opening on this board? Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted the information, was new to town, was interested in getting involved, they could access the information? It's been posted at stores. It's been sent out. I've Facebook. seen that, yeah. And it'll remain on our Facebook until, or excuse me, our website until it's filled. I think, I think we could take it off and wait until someone did show interest and then put it on. Save me some ink. Um, I mean, I do appreciate Renee's dedication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's, she's been here and been patient, too. So I just wanted to make that known. Okay, 25. Consideration, discussion, and possible action to review letters of interest and select candidates for Perkins Library Board to advisory positions. I have someone in mind, at least one of those, but I have not had the opportunity to talk to them in person. Maybe I could get Commissioner Foth to help me with that. I'll tell her later. So, Mary, think, do you want to leave that one on? Or I, take it I personally or? do. I, okay. I just haven't had, I haven't had time to we'll remind her every month. Um, do what? So we'll remind you every month to do it. <laughs> Somebody remind me like <laughs> two weeks before. <laughs> Send me an email. <laughs> Okay, 
26, new business under the Open Meeting Act. This agenda item is authorized only for matters not known about or which could not have been reasonably foreseen prior to the time of posting the agenda or any revised agenda. So he's so patient tonight. Thank you. <laughs> 27. I make a motion that we adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled a second. commission meeting. <laughs> A second. I was trying to breathe. She was ready breathe. for it that time. I, I snuck up on her last time. I heard you, Autumn. I'm trying to well, she wanted to pause in there. So I, I did. did. Yeah, yeah, I steal my glory. Stealing my joy. You're a joy thief. I paused. I did. Claire. Yes. Claire. Yes. Autumn. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Excuse me. Would you mind if we took a quick break before we started the next one? I know you've been waiting. <laughs> I need a few minutes. I work for y'all, so whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cute. We'll be in recess. We're, we will be in recess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's a good point. We're not in recess meeting, are we? No, no. You don't. Okay, good. You're right. I'm going to go stand in line to go to the bathroom. Are they Maybe they're going to cookies. <laughs> this is the best dinner ever. Mm. Salted caramel. Why is he that? Oh, Carla texted me. I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> she said this one has more chocolate chip. Thank wow. you very much. You're welcome. Those uh, fire helmets you guys are going to get rid of? Can I have one of them for my barbershop? We'll put them in the dumpster. Yeah, what dumpster? I don't know. The fire chief will do that. So. I get to go dumpster diving. I would love to have one for class and for safety. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we'll start back matter. up. Doesn't matter. I didn't realize that was still on. Sorry. Starts to that. Big brother. <laughs> Is the women in law enforcement thing tomorrow or Thursday? Tomorrow. Okay. From two to four? In Corley's courtroom? Yes, sir. Thank you. Is it a come and go deal or is it, you know, if it's, yeah, it's come and go.
Some of those have caramel in them, you know that, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and they're delicious. They look amazing, but I've had so much today. And I'm like, oh, you were given today. It was a blessing. Oh, no, I am very appreciative. Capitalize. Huh? Capitalize. I had cupcakes for breakfast. This is her. This is Valentine's How do you Day stay looking day. like that and eat all that stuff? You know, all the time. Just like, when I'm here and <laughs> in the morning, and I just when she's Perkins Public Works Authority, item agenda number two, consideration and action on consent agenda. Commissioners? Make a motion to accept. I'll second. Justin? Yes. Sarah? Mm -hmm. Mayor? Yes. 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 Uh, number four, public appearances, petitions, communications, and personal appearances under Oklahoma law. The board members are prohibited from discussing or taking any action on items not on today's agenda. Pass. Number five, consideration, discussion, and possible action to approve resolution 2-2023 authorizing amended application for American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, grant from the Oklahoma Water Resources Board. Mr. Ernst. After consulting with the Water Resources Board, this would allow us to apply for uh, all, a $1.9 million grant for the for half of a half of a water tower construction and lift station construction. It's based upon the Iowa Tribe um, agenda item, and I received an email a little while ago that they're going to revisit that or something, so I'm not real, I, I, this just approves the application, so I, I'm a hazard to say anything else, I don't, I don't know. Okay. It, we will never get it. But we have, I'm assuming we've applied for it because you're asking. We applied for a different project. Well, then it's not a yeah. completed application. It's not a completed application. That's what I didn't know if you said they wanted to say. Amended? <clears throat> what is the other thing? Amended? 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 We apply for like water ones, right? So are we going to use the application that they told us we need yet? Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. So we, sorry, it's been a long day. No, we, we applied under something else, right? Right. Correct? And then we did not get it, so now we have to amend that. 
and is that a reapplication or just an no. amendment? No, it's, it's just a manual. Gotcha. So everybody needs a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Consider I make a motion that we approve resolution twenty twenty three, Sarah. <laughs> Authorizing amended application for uh, American Rescue Plan Act right. from the Oklahoma Water Resources Board. I second. You made me laugh with the cookie thing. Mayor. 20. 2023. 20. 20. Okay. 2-2023. Would you have a cookie? I need one, apparently. Mayor. Yes. Sarah. Yes. 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 Jason. Yes. Consideration, discussion, and possible action to ratify application to the Oklahoma Rural Water Association Rural Infrastructure Grant, or the RIG Grant, in the amount of $61,260 with a match of $12,252 for the HX30G back system with 31 horsepower Briggs gas engine, 500 gallon spoils tank, 200 gallon water tank, and a 12,000 pound trailer. This is on both agendas right. because we have funding, we're not sure. The City is applying for the grant, but we're not sure the matching funds are going to come from yet. So we'll cover our bases you know, on both agendas. Okay, I was going to ask that question, so I appreciate your pressure. Uh, I make, go ahead. Uh -huh. yeah. I make a motion to ratify the application to the Oklahoma Rural Water Association's Rural Infrastructure Grant in the amount of $61,260 with a match of $12,252 for an HX30G back system with a 31 HP Briggs gas engine, 500 gal gallon spoils tank, 200 gallon water tank, and a 12,000 pound trailer. A second. Sarah? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, Number seven, consideration and discussion regarding the ODEQ notice of violation dated January 25th, 2023 at the wastewater treatment plant and solutions to mitigate future treatment issues. This is a, an agenda item that doesn't require any action at this time. It's just to let you know what's going on. Um, I think um, over the months there's been several parts of my report that have kind of brought this to light, but there, there are issues with the treatment um, at the wastewater plant. We've had computer issues. First we had valve issues. We replaced the valves. Then the valves weren't adjusted correctly, so the contractor came out and readjusted the valves. Then we had computer issues. Then we had a freezing issue. The latest issue is a, it's called a rake. It basically um, gets fine material out of the sewage, like rags and other things that may be flushed down the toilet before it goes into the reactors. So that has um, broke and it's been pulled out so when you have an interruption in treatment it you can get as deep into the woods as you want but basically it leads to more suspended solids and when out the way we knock bacteria out of the effluent leaving the plant is with UV light UV light burns the bacteria gives it a sunburn and kills it if there's solids floating in the water, the UV is not as effective. So um, James Sauls is here, the treatment manager. Um, he could speak more about it if you had specific questions. But we're working with at least three contractors at the same time to try to get this remedied. Um, the problem with a lot of these deals on sewer plants in Oklahoma, you're stuck with one contractor that has all the rights to certain things you have to have in a sewer plant. Mm -hmm. And that contractor may spend time in bigger cities that have more money than they do in smaller cities sometimes. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So time, um, we get kind of kicked in the back of the room sometimes. Um, so, D, so there has been issues with that, uh, the treatment process. It's very common for DEQ to send notices of violation and things like that. They monitor everything we do. We report it. We report it truthfully. And uh, we're working with DEQ to mitigate it. I do expect a consent order to come down. Consent orders can lead to fines. Um, a lot of times what will happen 
as DEQ will say, in lieu of this fine, if you spend this amount of money on your sewer plant, then you don't owe a fine, which is what we're doing. We're waiting to spend the money, but I don't have, I, I don't know how much. I don't know, I'm waiting to see how much an exact dollar amount to replace that rake or our screen. And, and we, did, we were having trouble getting that amount because we had a contractor pull it out of the plant, clean it up, try to take it apart. There's parts that are bad that he can't get apart. So we're waiting on this other contractor that carries it to tell us this is how much it's going to be. I do expect it to be um, over $100,000, and I do expect, in my opinion, and I'll talk to the city attorney, it would be an emergency purchase or we'll continue with problems, but that's neither here nor there. But it, it'll be expensive. If it requires us, I just show up, don't we? Yeah, we'll like just show up and approve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a timeline on when the contractor will be getting back to you? Are they, are well, they, they were supposed to be there uh, yesterday at 2 o'clock, and my phone never rang. Mm -hmm. Benko, Brent never called, did he? No, he didn't call me. So, is there anything that we can do to help in that process? No, I've actually driven to their headquarters yeah. and knocked on their door before and made them let me in. And Good for you. So, I may have to do that again. Well, I can't drive. I'll have somebody drive me. Uh, I can. But, I can. I can drive you. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just kind of letting. Everybody know what's going on, that there are some issues. I don't know how, they're not real uncommon, but we're not happy with them. It's not how we want to operate the plant, but we're just, the plant is 13 years old. Um, the, uh, it's a very difficult environment for any mechanical object to operate in. So they, these plants are pretty high tech but they also require a lot of maintenance and a lot of cost and a lot of replacement of things. I, I don't think you James, do you have anything to add or does anybody have any questions for James? He does a great job at the we treatment. appreciate you very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for appreciate hanging around to give us the opportunity to ask you questions. Absolutely, that's what I'm here for. I don't have any specific I, questions. I just, I just wish people would quit flushing things that don't belong down a toilet and quit putting oil down their kitchen sink drains, put it in the coffee, put it in the coffee cup, let it dry, put it in trash. That's just my two cents on that because it's costing, it's costing James extra work. It's cost, they, I don't think people realize, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude or mean. Exactly. I'm just saying that I don't think people realize what it's actually costing the citizens money. It's actually costing the city money for just little things like that that build up. I mean. So, uh, anyway, wish we could educate a little better on some of that. You got anything to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. It's just going to take some time. Um, the preventative maintenance is the big key if you want to keep stuff up and running. Uh, I got with Bob. Uh, part of the problem was equipment wasn't greased exactly like it was supposed to on the preventative maintenance schedule. Uh, to alleviate part of that, I'm actually getting some auto greasers. They're battery operated. Uh, we're going to get those installed on the equipment. And the grease and the, uh, the system, once we get this in, should last six months. So we'll, instead of doing it like daily or weekly, mm -hmm. it'll be on a six month rotation. So you've uh, been pretty much doing that daily and week? Yeah, I've been trying to, yes. Trying to keep up with uh, and fixing broken equipment and stuff. Just uh, keeping it going until we get the part? Yes, yes. Been babying it big time. Uh, the SCADA system is the other big issue, like Bob said. That's that's the control system uh, that controls all of the valves and the treatment process and all of that. Um, it's also 13 years old. A lot of the software is the original from 2010, so it's outdated. Uh, and it's starting to slow down you know, just due to age and everything. So I've reached out to three different SCADA vendors. Uh, I've got two quotes back and I'm waiting on the third one. I'm hoping to have it this week and then I will give it to Bob. Okay. So, but we, we are working to mitigate all the problems and everything.
Thank you very much. Well, I think it is the treatment issues. Oh, no. Well, the SCADA system will probably have to go to bid. I would expect it to be over six figures as well. So we're looking at some spending some serious money, but it's just part well, this of This is where some cities get in trouble. I think they've got all this money in their uh, public works authority, and then they spend it, and then the system goes bad. But I feel confident that racial has... Yeah, we have a racial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a racial. Okay. Well, thanks again. I appreciate you. And uh, I'm sure I'm not alone. So, number eight, new business under the Open Meeting Act. This agenda item is authorized only for matters not known about or which could have not been originally foreseen prior to the time of posting the agenda or any revised agenda. Number nine, I make a motion that we adjourn Perkins Public Works Authority meeting for February 14th. I second. I know, right? I'm just staying in here. You can just stay over there on the north side. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You're going to get the recorder. Next month. No, I don't want that recorder. <laughs> yes. Autumn. Yes, ma'am. Justin. Yes. You know, I'm just ornery enough. I got to keep my street going there. It's okay. It's very you know how that goes. Just keep me disappointed for <laughs> <laughs> This will stay with me. Can I turn this off now? Yes, please. Cackling over there. Hey, Hi. Love on that little girl. Hi. You're the best. Man, I won't miss her. You should. She's something special. I'm just kidding. She's sorry. She is. Uh, should see her playing on the ball. It's hilarious. You guys have a fantastic Valentine's evening. Yeah, you make some bread. Bread. I know. Cookies and brownies for dinner. So you know, pre-K and Valentine's Day is a whole level of just. Oh, you've got to be exhausted. It's a whole level. I do. You've been there, and done that. It's, 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 it's,